them. Um, he has been saying some good, obliging things to me as well. In short, Belinda, he has abused me so barbarously of late that I could almost be resolved to play the downright wife and cuckold him. That would be downright indeed. Oh, why, after all, there is more to it than one could imagine, child. I know, according to the strict statute law of religion, I should do wrong. But if there were a court of chantry in heaven, I am sure I should cast him. If there were a house of lords, you might. In either, I should infallibly carry my cause. Why, he is the first aggressor and not I. Aye, but you know we must return good for evil. That may be a mistake in translation. Oh. Prithee, Belinda, be of my opinion, for I am positive that I am in the right. And if you would take up the prerogative of women, you likewise would be positive you were in the right whenever you did a thing you have a mind to do. <laughs> but I shall play the fool and jest on until you begin to believe that I am in earnest. I shan't take the liberty, madam, to think of anything you desire to keep a secret from me. Alas, child, I have no secrets. My heart could never yet contain my tongue. Your eyes, you mean, well, for I am sure I have seen them gadding when your tongue has been locked up safe enough. My eyes gadding? Really after whom, child? Why, after one who thinks you hate him. As much as I know, you love him. Constant, you mean? Oh. <laughs> I do so. Really, what on earth could have put such a thing into your head? That which puts things into most people's heads. Observation. <laughs> Why, what have you observed? And in the name of wonder, I have observed you blush when you met him. Force yourself away from him, and afterward be out of humor with everything about you. In a word, never was poor creature so spurred on by desire, or so reined in with fear. How strong is fancy? How weak is woman? <coughs> Prithee, Belinda, have a better opinion of your aunt's inclination. Dear aunt, have a better opinion of your niece's understanding. You make me angry. You make me laugh. So you are determined to persist? Positively. And all I can say will signify nothing. Though I should swear to a false. I should think it true. Then let us both forgive. For we have both offended. I am making a secret and you in discovering it. Good nature may do much, but you have more reason to forgive one than I have to pardon the other. Tis true, you have given me so many proofs of your friendship that my reserve has indeed been a prime. But that you may more readily forgive, child, do remember that when our hearts would prompt us to a thing which our morals and religion forbid, we would word possible, conceal even from the soul itself the knowledge of the body's weakness. Now I hope to make your friend amends. You'll hide nothing from her for the future, though the body still may grow weaker and weaker. <laughs> no, from this moment I have no more reserve. And as proof of my repentance, Belinda, I will own in danger. Merit and wit assault me from without. Knowledge and love solicit me within. My husband's barbarous usage plucks me to vengeance, and Satan, catching upon the fair occasion, throws in my path that vengeance which of all vengeance is pleases woman best. Tis well, Constant, don't know the weakness of the fortification. For oh my conscience, He'd soon come on to thee. So you see, I am no 
coquette. And if you'll follow my advice, you'll never be one neither. Though it's true that coquetry does make up one of the prime ingredients of the natural composition of a woman, and that I, as well as others, could be well pleased to see a group of young fellows glancing and ogling and watching all occasion to do 40 foolish or vicious things why if any of them should come so far as to hanging or drowning I... oh. Dave, if I could leave pure woman well enough alone I should be but too well pleased with it I swear it would tickle me strangely in us that we give the least encouragement but where we design to come to a conclusion. But it is unreasonable that we would engage a man in a disease that we have beforehand determined we never will apply a cure to. It is true, but then a woman must abandon one of the supreme blessings of her life, for I am fully convinced that no man has half that pleasure in possessing a mistress as a woman has in jilting a gallant. But um, on to a more pressing matter. Do you think your husband inclined to jealousy? Uh, no, he does not love me well enough for that. Oh, oh and how wrong men's maxims are. For they are really jealous of us unless they are very fond. Whereas they should be concerned with our inclinations, for there depends their fate. Well. Men may talk, but they are not as wise as we, that's certain. In our affairs, at least. Nay, for I think we should outdo them in the affairs of state as well. For me thinks that men do and undo, and make but bad work on. Why then don't we get involved in the intrigues of government as well? <laughs> because, child, we have intrigues of our own that grant us more sport. <laughs> So let's in and consider a problem.